Gao Fei who asserted that he had never seen the old nun before and questioned whether she was the one who had broken into the city and killed their men. Guan Yu warned them to be careful, noting that her martial arts were weird and that she left only bones behind when she killed their men. Gao Fei Bao summoned Ling Bao repeatedly, asserting that they needed to put the old nun in her place. Fan Li Hua notified Kin Man and announced that she would take his place and kill the old nun. In response, Kin Man comforted Fan Li Hua not to worry and that the old nun wouldn't escape. He inquired if Fan Li Hua wanted to capture her alive. Fan Li Hua reiterated firmly, insisting on killing her. She emphasized that the old nun was very strong, so they shouldn't give her a chance to escape. Fan Li Hua continued, stating that the old nun had killed so many of their men and harmed Cheng Dale's bull. Fan Li Hua was certain that the old nun was not a good person. Kin Man concurred with her assessment. At the same time, Tong Fei recalled Zhao Zilong of their long training together. She encouraged him to watch her battle carefully, suggesting that he might learn something and that breaking through his bottleneck depended on his perception. And Zhao Zilong simply concurred. The tension in the air escalated as they surrounded the old nun. Meanwhile, in the forest outside the city, Bai Yinying dismissed Cheng Dalia's suggestion that she join the Toad Village. She criticized him as crazy, questioning how he could suggest such a thing. Surprised, Cheng Dale reflected that he believed she possessed great skills. He proposed that following him and Lai Wan Er would be better than being a mere killing machine. Mischievously, he speculated whether Nai Yin Yang had been deceived by a man and betrayed her master, wondering why she couldn't do what others could, especially considering her friendship with Lai Wan Er. He asserted that Nai Yin Yang's skills would be a great help to recruit her. Perplexed, Nai Yin Yang exclaimed that Cheng Dale had gone insane. Determined, Cheng Dale expressed that Nai Yin Yang had a deep misunderstanding of him. He revealed to have dreams of himself. Nai Yin Yang was surprised and questioned whether he had dreams. Cheng Dale glanced back at her and probed if she wanted to hear about his dreams. Hesitant, Nai Yin Yang responded that she didn't really care. Nevertheless, Cheng Dale still shared that he had once held the sage book in his hand. However, while traveling around, witnessing the suffering of refugees and the powerful behaving like tigers and wolves, he became angry with the sages. He conveyed that an idea had come to him, to break the old world and rebuild it anew. Annoyed, Nai Yin Yang interrupted him, commanding him to shut up and that she didn't want to hear it. But Cheng Dale ignored her protests and continued, stating that his hands only wished to grasp those of his companion. He called out to Nai Yin Yang and asked if she wouldn't like to see these dreams fulfilled with him. Speechless, Nai Yin Yang felt fed up. Suddenly, Cheng Dale became alarmed. The system beeped with an urgent side mission as he glanced towards the direction of his city, while Nai Yin Yang looked at him curiously. The mission was 19 Kingdoms Storm Western Shu Remnant, and the content was to kill the old nun, Moonlight Temple. He quickly informed Yin Mu that they needed to return. He reported that something had happened in the village. They hurried back, with Yin Mu carrying Nai Yin Yang. Back at Toad City, at Cheng Dale's stables mansion. The old nun observed the Black Bull, and a few generals were all elite members of the Toad Village. While Kin Man voiced indignation, Fan Li Hua shouted at the old nun, questioning why she dared to break into the Toad City alone, and if she wasn't afraid of death. As she observes, the old nun wonders why there were Imperial soldiers, including the Merlian Guard present. Simultaneously, Tong Fei recognized the old nun and that she had once inquired about her during her time as a real Imperial Guard, revealing that she belongs to the Moonlight Temple. She instructed Zhao Zilong not to take any action, and that she was not someone he could handle yet, and Zhao Zilong acknowledged. Without notice, Kin Man launched an attack using his Plum Blossom Spear. However, the old nun easily caught Kin Man's spear and released a swarm of insects towards him. Kin Man managed to dodge and retreated. Kin Man pondered the nature of the Black Fog, realizing it couldn't be good as he struggled to wield his spear. The insects suddenly dissipated from his spear. He warned his companions to be careful, as the old nun's martial arts were very strange. He also advised them not to touch her. At that moment, the old nun released numerous insects from her body, and Tong Fei charged towards her and recognized the Western Shu Gu's technique. She alerted her of their past conflict, as the Empire had sent the Merlian guards to eradicate them a hundred years ago. She engaged with her hundred birds facing the Phoenix Spear and Jade Phoenix attack. However, Tong Fei couldn't believe that the old nun blocked her attack. She questioned how she was still alive, and the old nun retorted that the Empire's lackeys were actually present as mountain bandits. Afterward, the old nun inhales deeply and released a swarm of insects from her mouth. Shocked, Tong Fei quickly evaded. At the same time, Kin Man was also initiating another attack on the old nun from behind, as he yelled for his attack to be taken. 
Irritated, Tong Fei expressed her disgust at the insect and prepared to attack again, while the black bull charged forward with his violent collision technique. With Tong Fei wielding the hundred birds facing the phoenix spear, and Kin Man wielding the plum blossom spear technique, a tremendous impact occurred as they attacked the old nun, causing the fence wall to collapse. As Zhao Zilong watched, he couldn't help but reflect that such a battle wasn't something an ordinary person could enter. He voiced his concerns to Tong Fei. Proud, Zhang Fei observed the nature of the martial world. He recognized the old nun's excellent martial arts and strange skills, but questioned what she could do in the face of thousands of troops. He noted that it would only require a bit more effort and sacrifice a few more people. Wan Yu suggested to Fan Lihua that they should go together. Subsequently, Axi summoned the Xi team and directed them to assemble quickly, ensuring that everyone was ready. Fan Lihua commented that there was no need anymore, as the old nun was already like a turtle in a jar, so there was no need to sacrifice their men. She inquired if the Xi team wasn't in place yet. Guan Yu responded that he was on it but doubted if they really needed to use that, as it seemed like overkill for an old nun. He noted that if they did use it, the courtyard would be ruined. Fan Lihu assured him that there would be no harm and it was just a stable. She pointed out that a nun who could sneak in without a sound wasn't simple. She hypothesized that she must be connected to the assassin who targeted Cheng Dalei. Worried, Fan Lihu expressed concern that if the old nun was not killed, they would have endless trouble in the future. Back in the fight, the old nun easily deflected the spears of Tong Fei and Kin Man. Tong Fei cautioned Kin Man to back off. But Kin Man and Tong Fei were only able to react after the old nun attacked with a swarm of insects, causing them both to be thrown. The old nun jumped to escape, but Fan Lihua prevented her as she commanded to release the arrows. However, the old nun effortlessly deflected the arrows with her insects. Just then, Axie announced that the Xi team was ready. He ordered his men to fire thunder. Immediately, his men threw firebombs, cursed, and taunted her to eat their firebombs. The old nun was late to react and queried what it was, and the firebombs exploded around her, causing her to be thrown away by the explosion. Due to the firebombs, a massive explosion occurred, shaking the surroundings of the stables. While the stables were engulfed in flames, someone continued commanding them to keep bombarding her. The firebombs exploded in another direction, resulting in loud and explosive chaos in the area. Fan Lihua, who was outside the stable, observed as the old nun attempted to escape with wounds visible on her face. Before she could flee, the old nun swiftly hurled some of the firebombs back at the toad troops. The troops were startled by the unexpected attack but quickly warned each other to be cautious and to move away. However, they reacted too late, and the toad troops were caught in the explosion, causing them to scream in pain. Someone exclaimed that it wasn't good, suggesting that the old nun was taking advantage of the chaos to break through. The troops urged each other to stop her and not let her break through, they all determined to kill her. As they attempted to block her path, the old nun used her insect abilities and swiftly dismembered the toad soldiers that were blocking her way, causing them excruciating agony. The toad troops were thrown away as the old nun controlled her insect attacks against them. With sternness, Fan Lihua questioned, asking if her horse wanted to leave, and the horse neighed in response. Decisively, Fan Lihua commanded him to stay. They charged straight toward the old nun and fearlessly engaged in a one-on-one -on -one battle. The old nun widened her eyes in shock as Fan Lihua swiftly wielded her pear blossom sword. She delivered a powerful strike that caused the old nun to fall. A black insect spurted out from her body while her dismembered hand lay at a distance. Fan Lihua remarked that regrettably, the sword had failed to sever her head. Suddenly, the cut-off hands of the old nun began to move, swarmed with insects. Fan Lihua noticed this and wondered why there was no blood. Rising to her feet, the old nun proclaimed that it was enough and referred to them as a bunch of dogs. She declared that she would kill and eat them all, pondering how dare such a group of weak and defeated wretches challenge her. She asserted her identity as the eldest princess of the Western Shu Kingdom. With fury in her eyes, the old nun questioned how they dared to force her into this situation and vowed not to spare them. Observing Zhu Shenji's absence, she expressed outrage at their audacity. She mocked toad people as a swarm of insects, emphasizing their impudence in daring to hunt and kill her. Rising slowly to her feet, she pondered aloud that only using worldly martial arts against them was a constraint. She determined that regardless of the risk of exposure, Zhu Shenji would require time to arrive from the city's center. With eyes blazing with fury, the old nun resolved that she would fight her way out at that moment. Simultaneously, Fan Lihua sensed a change in the old nun's momentum. Zhao Zilong warned Tong Fei to be careful, and Tong Fei nodded in agreement. Kin Man compared the old nun to the Thousand Horse Bandit, acknowledging her toughness and questioned if ordinary people could deal with her. 
With fearless boldness, Jiang Fei taunted the old nun, insulting her as an old witch, and accused her of pretending to be a ghost. At the same time, Gao Feibao added to the mockery, criticizing her audacity in killing the people of Toad Village. Fan Lihua felt ridiculed by their people's behavior, questioning if they were too weak to detect the change in the old nun's momentum. The generals of each group, along with their troops, joined in taunting the old nun, daring her to go on. Some stated they were unafraid while others threatened to blow her up so severely that even her mother wouldn't recognize her. There was even a foolish retort from someone saying they were going to battle her mom. The troops were ordered to prepare for a second round of firebomb attacks. They were enthusiastic, screaming, and getting ready. Meanwhile, in the system space, Guishang sensed something amiss. He stated that he would play later and that something was wrong. The machine questioned what was happening, inquiring if another container had infiltrated the city again. Lin Shei Yu asked if they should help. Guisheng replied that there was no need, as it seemed like just a minion that fed the container to gain power. It was not something that ordinary people can handle. Guisheng entered the portal and stated that he would be right back, while the machine didn't seem to care and just urged Lin Shei Yu to continue playing. Back to the real world, where the old nun was furious who unleashed a swarm of insects and declared that she was going to rip them apart. Suddenly, Zhu Shenji appeared, his arrival causing the old nun to startle with surprise. Her initial anger shifted to fear as she gazed in Zhu Shenji's direction. The old nun's eyes followed Zhu Shenji's movements as he approached the troops. She sensed a formidable aura emanating from Zhu Shenji. Feeling uneasy, the old nun believed that the nation's fortune had been fully active. She pondered whether this could have been Zhu Shenji's plan, speculating that he had scared her away to trap her. In surprise, she considered that this had been a premeditated hunt, mentioning that he had long known her secret and suspected it was a trap from the start. A sense of powerlessness, of being completely in one's control, enveloped her. Alert, she reflected on how frightening Zhu Shenji was. Meanwhile, Zhu Shenji, who had just arrived, questioned the troops about the big battle and what had been happening. One of his men reported that they were catching an assassin and expressed concern that with his status, he should not take such risks. Annoyed, Zhu Shenji retorted confidently, questioning what dangers he could encounter. He asserted that even ghosts and gods were afraid of him, as he was just an old thing wondering what the big deal was. However, deep in thought, Zhu Shenji felt nervous and swore that he couldn't sleep at night. He decided it was better to find a safe place with many people. In a panicked flea, the old nun ran fast and screamed as she felt fear. Unbeknownst to her, the direction of her escape was exactly where Zhang Fei and Gao Feibao were. Confident, Gao Feibao remarked that they were just waiting for her to arrive. As the old nun leaped, Gao Feibao swiftly commanded his men to throw the net just as the net was about to catch her completely. A victorious smile spread across Gao Feibao's face as he declared that those in the martial world should use martial methods. To their surprise, the old nun unleashed her insects, which promptly tore the net apart. Ling Zhen shouted to Zhang Fei and Gao Feibao, urging them to quickly dodge. As they both swiftly evaded, a cannon was set up behind them. Ling Zhen, who was holding a torch, commanded his troops to fire. The cannon fired directly toward the old nun. She was shocked and unable to avoid it, bearing the full impact of the cannon blast. The force sent her flying toward the crumbling rocks. Meanwhile, outside the city, Cheng Dalei and Yin Mu were swiftly dashing back towards the city. Gritting his teeth in frustration, Cheng Dalei realized that the direction was towards his mansion, noting the use of cannons. He urged Yin Mu to hasten their pace and they reached the walls of the city. Back to the stable area, as the smoke from the cannon dissipated, one of the troops wondered aloud if they had got the old nun. Impressed by the shot, one of the men commented that it packed quite a punch. Zhang Fei confirmed that it was indeed a direct hit. Ling Zhen questioned if the old nun was human, as he did not see a drop of blood despite her getting hit. A troop explained that in the martial world, there were indeed demonic people who practiced goo, emphasizing that those could turn their bodies into human-like insects and that they were invulnerable to weapons and fire similar to it. At the same time, Guisheng observed them and remarked that the old nun's breath was extremely weak and almost imperceptible. He questioned whether mortals could solve the minion problem by themselves, noting that it was the first time he had seen such a situation and finding it quite amazing. Concerned, Zhang Fei wondered aloud if they had truly killed the old nun, questioning the absence of any blood. Gao Feibao replied confidently that she should be dead considering she had taken a cannonball to the face and had been blasted to pieces. He expressed disbelief, questioning if there was truly anyone who could have survived that. Additionally, he expressed amazement and commented that his ears almost popped. 
Later, the troops cheered and remarked that even to deal with a single person, their artillery battalion was still needed and noted the big noise it had caused. They joyfully laughed, expressing satisfaction that after training for so long, they could finally showcase their might this day. They noted that it was akin to a cannon hitting a mosquito as soon as they arrived. They remarked on how easily they dealt with it. The troops muttered among themselves and excitedly remarked that they just didn't know when they could fight. A person suggested going to Chang'an to give the officials a taste of their artillery. With enthusiasm, Ling Zhen responded that it depended on Cheng Dalei's intention, mentioning Cheng Dalei's plans to train an artillery battalion for each unit, boasting that they were the first batch. The troops enthusiastically cheered, expressing their confidence in their future training and their readiness to seize opportunities on the battlefield to show their might. They erupted in cheers. Meanwhile, Kin Man's army ordered 100 people to stay to clean up the scene the next day and build a new horse base in the same place. The rest were to continue searching the whole city and remain on high alert. He also mentioned that when Cheng Dale returns, their army should join in artillery battalion training, and his people excitedly affirmed. A person mockingly questioned the peerless martial arts master, who was blown up by their firebombs, and remarked sarcastically that she had been running around like a dog. Maxi agreed, instructing his troops that when Cheng Dalei returned, they must ensure to take credit for the victory, while Zhao Zilong observed them in silence. Tong Fei called out to him, suggesting that if he wanted to improve his spearmanship, he needed to kill more people. She noted that life in the Toad Village was too comfortable, and emphasized that if this continued, his spear mastery would become dull. She suggested that tomorrow, they will increase the training. Zhao Zilong responded that he understood but mentioned that he had been practicing martial arts for over 10 years and could barely enter the hall. He pointed out to Tong Fei that she knew that the cannon was made less than six months ago, and they had only trained for two months. He speculated that the old nun must be the top expert in the martial world, yet she couldn't resist a single shot from the cannon in front of her. Perplexed, Tong Fei uttered Zhang Zilong's name. But Zhang Zilong proceeded, saying that he had a hunch. He worriedly mentioned that the era of martial artists was about to end. After Zhao Zilong asserted, Tong Fei fell silent before reassuring him not to be depressed. She pointed out that while martial artists are strong in one-on-one -on -one fights, she observed that they can only kill about a hundred enemies. She continued, adding that battlefield weapons like cannons are meant for sieges and pondered whether he should compare himself to such weapons. Furthermore, she stressed that it's just a weapon, no different from the spear in his hand. She wondered why martial artists should worry about weapons threatening their status when they can also learn to use them. Zhao Zilong agreed that they indeed could and recognized his understanding. Soon, Su Ying arrived at the place, and Fan Lihua noticed her and greeted her. Su Ying asked if everything was resolved, and Fan Lihua confirmed that it was. Giving a thumbs up, Fan Lihua commented that the old nun had been quite tricky, killing and injuring a dozen men, but it was not a big problem. She voiced concern about Cheng Dalei's precious mount, stating that after such a fight, the black bull would probably be dead by now. Suddenly, in the smoke, a loud deep sound was emitted. Only the black bull ran out of the stable, and Fan Lihua, unsurprised, remarked that it seemed fine and noted its luck. The black bull proceeded to munch on the grass once it was out of the stable, while Fan Lihua and Su Ying, along with their troops, observed it. Fan Lihua instructed his men to go and get some hay to feed the black bull, and the men acknowledged the order. As they watched the black bull munching on the grass, they suddenly became alert upon realizing that it was eating the dismembered hand of the old nun. Fan Lihua commanded the black bull to spit it out. Annoyed, she reprimanded the bull, instructing it not to pick up things from the ground to eat. She hit him, causing it to spit out the hand and fall to the ground. Suddenly, the hand moved, catching Su Ying's attention, and she was visibly shocked upon seeing it. While observing the surroundings, Su Ying felt that something was not right. The scattered bits on the ground started to move. While the toad men were busy cleaning up the surroundings, the bits also moved slowly. Due to the heavy smoke in the area, people were busy helping each other clean up. They did not notice that the bits were moving. While Fan Lihua caressed the black bull, Su Ying remains unsettled. Fan Lihua perceived Su Ying's demeanor and addressed her. Terrified, Su Ying's voice trembled as she called out to Fan Lihua and revealed that the old nun was not dead. Fan Lihua inquired who wasn't dead. Quickly, Su Ying exclaimed that it was the old nun, describing her as a monster, and pointed out that all the bits were converging. Fan Lihua became suddenly alarmed and directed the troops urgently, telling them to quickly fetch the kerosene. She declared that the old nun was a monster and not dead, urging them to burn her. The troops rushed to fetch kerosene, fireworks, and straw, and threw them in. 
the archers prepared their flaming arrows and Fan Lihua gave the order to fire them. The stable area was engulfed in a large blaze. Everyone watching sternly, including Kin Man, Tong Fei, and Xilong, appeared prepared for whatever was to come. Su Ying and Fan Lihua were also alert as they watched the burning site. A significant fire had erupted in Toad City, causing heavy smoke in the place. Meanwhile, in Cheng Dale's mansion bedroom, the guards stationed outside remained vigilant. Inside, Liu Jai held Cheng Dale's child, pondering how the capture of an assassin had caused such a commotion, leading to everyone being called out. As Cheng Dale's baby murmured in her sleep, Liu Jai hummed soothingly to reassure the baby that she was there. Hopeful, Liu Jai pondered when she would become pregnant, considering she had slept with Cheng Dale so many times, yet her stomach hadn't grown as expected. With concern etched on her face, Liu Jai watched the burning sight unfolding outside from the window. Suddenly, the baby cried loudly. At the same time, Cheng Dale and Yin Mu spotted a massive fire ahead. They heard a loud voice echoing in the area, threatening to kill them all. Uncertain, Nai Yinyang wondered if it was her master. Amidst the raging fire, a horrifying voice erupted, vowing to kill them all and expressing irritation at the intense heat. The men were bewildered by the noise, wondering aloud what it could be and urging each other to come closer, believing someone was present. The old nun screamed that she would burn them all. Meanwhile, Guisheng, who was watching, commented that the old nun was not dead and questioned if this was the second phase of the boss battle. The bits rapidly flew through the air, and they were about to merge. The people watched as the bits converged into a large entity. A shadowy figure formed from her collective mass of bit, and continued muttering words like hot, kill, ravage, and gnaw, feeling pain and vowing to kill them. With fury in her eyes, she repeated her intent to kill them. The troops screamed in fear as they witnessed the demonic figure. Some questioned what it was, and someone remarked that the old nun was not human. Filled with horror as they looked at the creature, a troop questioned if it was a demon or a monster, while someone remarked that they didn't think such things existed in this world. Just like the others, Fan Lihua and Su Ying were astonished. At the same moment, Zhu Shenji froze in fear, much like the other overwhelmed troops. They questioned if this was something the mortals could deal with. Some stated that it was impossible and that kind of thing was a monster. Meanwhile, Kin Man sensed an oppressive pressure in the sky once again. Feeling a weight upon him, he compared it to the sensation experienced during the invasion of the Thousand Horse Bandit, finding it eerily familiar. 